Hello everybody and welcome to Daily Entomologist. Uh, this video, uh, we're going to look at uh, different examples of uh, sexual dimorphism uh, in insects. Um, so basically what that is, is the difference between the males and the females. Uh, so, uh, sexual dimorphism, especially in insects, can be uh, quite exaggerated. Um, and it can be a wide uh, array of things. Uh, a common uh, one you see in insects is uh, size. Uh, females tend to be larger than males for the most part. Um, Another uh, example is uh, the presence or absence of uh, horns or any atomical, anatomical uh, display type uh, thing. Like, uh, for example, state beetles and rhinoceros beetles. The males have big showy horns. Uh, they use for combat with other males, while females have r reduced or no horns at all. Um, uh, others will include uh, males would be winged, females would be have no wings, as in the case with uh, velvet ants. Um, and uh, also uh, just straight up difference in a color. Uh, males and females will be completely different colors. Um, that's also that, for example, that color is a good example for birds as well uh, and everything like that. Uh, so, this video, I'm just going to go through a couple uh, different examples of what I just talked about in uh, different uh, things of insects. So, uh, hopefully, you'll find this video kind of interesting. All right, so the first uh, thing we're going to look at here are uh, velvet ants. And, uh, see on the left here, these are uh, female. You see there's no wings. Then on the right here, we have the males, and you see uh, wings. And take a look at the size of the stinger on that. Uh, so, velvet ants is an excellent example, I think, for flightless versus flying. Uh, difference between males and females. Uh, in fact, in velvet ants, the males will look so radically different in color and size than uh, the females that the males have fre frequently been described as new and different species. Um, because they didn't know that, because they just looked so completely different. Um, so that tends to be a problem, especially in velvet ants. Um, but obviously they're, they've been able to like slowly figure out which uh, species are truly different species and which ones are just uh, under collected or under, under sampled specimens of already previously known uh, species that's been collected as females. Uh, so uh, yeah the uh, this is a quite fascinating group of insects and uh, always a good example of a dimorphism between male and female. All right, and that's we're going to look at the size difference. And one of the most notable size differences I have in my collection that I can show is uh, this right here. 
This is the Southern uh, Two Striped Walking Stick. And uh, if you might have guessed, on the left side, the big one is a female. And the one on the right, the small one, is the male. And these are full grown uh, adults. And you can see the massive size difference between the two. Female really big, large, bulky. Oh, that has room for uh, eggs and everything. And the male is just this tiny little thing here. And when you see these mating, uh, you'll see the male uh, actually riding on the female's back. And the female just, uh, well, she and he'll just sit there while they mate and she'll do all the walking around and everything. Uh, so, first time I actually saw this species was, uh, was actually a mating pair. It wasn't this one, but I've seen mating pairs before down in Texas. And, uh, I was actually quite shocked at how big of a size difference there was. And if you've never seen this species before, this might be a big uh, shock for you too. This is a really, really awesome uh, walking stick species. Uh, when you think of walking sticks, you don't really think of them being this bulky. Think of the like the more skinny twig-like looking ones. But uh, there are some really large walking sticks out there with some really nice size on them. But uh, yeah. I figure this is as good an example as any for uh, showing the size difference between males and females. Alright, next up. As a... Uh, I've actually shown these guys in a couple videos recently, um, but this is going to be my example of uh, presence or absence of uh, horns or other excessively large uh, appendages and body parts and stuff uh, that males have and females don't have. Um, I have some beetle examples as well I didn't bring out. Um, but this is an example for like stag beetles and rhinoceros beetles and all that stuff. For males have the like, giant horns and females have little to no horns. Uh, so in this example we have do eastern uh, dobson flies. And body wise, they look uh, similar. All the way up. And then when it gets to the head and their mandibles, uh, that's the hugest difference you can see. On the left here, you have the males with the really long, scary looking mandibles. And then you have the females here with the really short, uh, pinching one more animal, mandibles. Um, now my experience, uh, these things are, this, these ones are just so bulky and hard to use that they really don't pinch you very good. Uh, but the females, um, those mandibles are a little bit more, uh, do pack a little bit of a punch to you. So it's kind of weird that the non scary looking mandibles are actually, will actually hurt more. But, uh, yeah. This is a very, a very, uh, dramatic example of, uh, males having excessive decorations. Uh, well, females don't. Plus, I just might like using these guys as for examples of stuff because they're just so cool looking. I mean, how can you not like these? So, yeah. Another excellent example, I think. 
and uh, I think uh, what I have uh, last thing I'm going to show you is just a difference in uh, color as well. So uh, I'll get uh, those going here. Awesome, awesome. All right, so for uh, difference in colors, I actually got about two examples of butterflies. Uh, so the first example here is the uh, black swallowtail, a uh, pretty common species in my area. And uh, as you can see, there is also a slight size difference. So on the left here, with the more yellow, We have a beautiful uh, male. Then on the right, with the less yellow and more blue coloration, we have a female. And uh, this uh, difference is uh, consistent in this species. As uh, I'm going to show you here real quick, I have a thing of them, so like all those are males up here and the females are down here. So they all show that same uh, difference in yellow, uh, more yellow versus uh, more blue uh, coloration. Although I do have an interesting specimen here. Where... Uh, Notice the blue on these females here. Uh, largely absent blue scales in this particular specimen. So, uh, to me, that, I find that really awesome. But, uh, yeah, this is pretty consistent. Um, other butterflies have very little uh, to no visible uh, difference in coloration or pattern on the wings between males and females. Um, others are a lot more extreme than this. And others, there's just a slight variation that you can see once you actually look at the wings and stuff. Um, so a butterfly is very pretty good in uh, differences in males and females. But uh, definitely a this is a definitely a beautiful species, uh, extremely common species around my area. So really glad I could see these every year. These also, uh, my uh, grandma plants um, dill, uh, mustard, parsley, and all that type of stuff in our gardens for host plants for these butterflies as well. So I get to see their caterpillars every year, which is awesome as well. So I'm going to show you... Uh, Put these away, I'm going to go ahead and show you the uh, last example here of uh, color differences. Alright, uh, example I'm going to show you now is actually a species of copper. This is a blue copper, where on the left here, we have a really, really gorgeous, uh, although quite beaten up uh, male, which exhibits uh, this beautiful blue color, like uh, just like a uh, actual blue, but this is a copper. Um, this is actually the only male I've ever seen. Um, so even though even though it was in a kind of rough shape, um, I had to get it for my collection, so I kept it. And then on the right here we have a female uh, collected at the same location. You can see just bland, more uh, brown coloration. Um, so this is, uh, I put this more of a extreme example of difference in coloration. Just two completely, they look like different species. Um, and there are some other coppers that look pretty similar to the females, but 
this is a pretty excellent example uh, between uh, male and female color differences. So, um, yeah. So those are examples I'm going to show you in this video. Uh, hope you enjoy looking at some of these insects and the uh, differences and uh, hopefully you'll be able to uh, start noticing or looking at uh, differences uh, and all the sexual dimorphism that you see in insects around your area and uh, uh, be able to uh, appreciate the uh, diversity and uh, everything in uh, each individual species. So I hope you like this video. Uh, if you have if you have an insect that you really like that has extreme differences between males and females, uh, comment below and tell me what they are. Um, so comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.